Hey Dunchbags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here and I am here with John, aka Red Hawk Director, and today we will be reviewing the, what is it, the fifth, the fifth studio album from Haywire? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the fifth anyway. Yeah, we, yeah. we actually already did this review once already and we ran into some issues. I lost the audio <laughs> basically. Not John's way fault, to, but... Way to break the fourth wall. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that happened, so I, I figure just in case there's some kind of awkward moments where we have to repeat certain things that that's why that's why it's going to end up like that because this is our second time going through this album together and obviously um we this is kind of a collaborative thing so i'm going uh, we're also doing a video on john's channel uh, where we rank every song on the album so if you guys want to check that one out or if you haven't seen it yet make sure to do it and uh but anyway let's get right into this so um initial thoughts really on the album what what are your um major like summary kind of kind of thoughts with this it's if you've listened to his first four albums it's it's got the same haywire kind of it's glitchy it's got like piano stuff it's mm. got some jazz elements but it's definitely a lot more electronic than his previous stuff and I don't know if that's because of the Monster Cat influence or because of his natural progression as an mm-hmm. artist, but that's certainly a thing that really stands out to me upon looking at his previous stuff. See, a kind of thing when we look at this, uh, when we look at his old discography especially, is prior to uh, Twofold One, he was releasing about an album every year uh, post-2009 mm-hmm. when his first album, Lotus, was released. And then, actually, um, something that we did talk about last time, but not too heavily in detail, was um, that his music originally was very heavy, um, kind of in the jazz vein. Obviously, when we come mm-hmm. into this album, we can hear Hey Wire's jazz and classical influence. We can hear that... Uh, classical influence especially in the first track and mostly jazz and the rest of this album but uh when you go back to his very first albums uh you can hear it's primarily like jazz kind of mixed with trip hop i'd probably say yeah. is is what you'd file it under and you don't really hear uh start hearing that electronic influence until i noticed today uh dub sonic was the first dub album. sonic yeah that was the big that and was when everything kind of changed yeah. i think as well um it's probably appropriately titled because it's called dub sonic and it seems to be the album like this was released when dubstep first hit like pop mainstream Mm -hmm. um so that's probably when he started incorporating those elements and then of course uh really i think i probably prior to listening uh through his discography i would have said twofold one is really the defining uh element of his career at this point like define um really defining what his current sound is but kind of after going through it i'd say really the voyage would be the album that kind of uh shaped where haywire's music is today uh that was Mm -hmm. really when he started going more on the electronic side of things than uh the jazz side of things i'd probably say but this album of course is the the first album that monster cat ever released uh the first lp anyway rather than compilation album that was the only one for like i think another year after yeah something like that and then the next one was variants ancient and arcane obviously this is probably my favorite album period that haywire has done it's actually my favorite album that monster cat has released uh period uh, aside from the compilations obviously um when it comes in terms of artists releasing their own stuff i think this is probably the most quality uh project that monster cat has pushed out yeah i would say twofold part two and space cadet are both close space Mm -hmm. cadet just because i'm like a sucker for right right but as far as like just a a pure LP, you can certainly make an argument for this. And I think it's my personal favorite out of the two twofold LPs. Mm-hmm. I think at one point uh, I did prefer twofold part two over this one, probably mm-hmm. because of kind of the concept it was going for. And I think uh, really that primary concept was that uh, twofold part one was going to be the more organic of the albums and then twofold part two is kind of going to be the more electronic experimental album and i think he did an excellent job kind of uh, defining those two things with the two albums with the artwork and everything as Mm -hmm. well but this album uh, kind of looking back on it i just feel like this one is so much more of like a classic like this is your classic haywire um there's obviously a lot of great content on twofold part two but looking back on it i i think i'd probably just prefer uh, most of the music on this one as well as well as in, in general i think this album just set uh set the stones for a lot of haywire's future content a lot of his best material in my opinion mm-hmm. uh like twofold part two of course and then we've got insight and ever changing i think ever changing was probably very influenced by this album uh 
yeah. probably closer than Insight. If you go back to the first three songs he released on Monster Cat, they're all, I would say, pretty different than this because they're all mm-hmm. glitch hop, mm-hmm. uh, synergy back and forth in his remix of Peacock, mm-hmm. and. I feel like a lot of people were maybe expecting him to continue to go down that route and just kind of I don't want to say like hem himself into into like just the glitch hop guy, mm-hmm. but then he comes out with this and it's uh, schism is glitch hop and doppelganger mm-hmm. is, but the rest of it's stuff like neuro house and mm-hmm. future bass. I think another thing to mention is that the song Voice of Reason, which was the uh, closer to the album, is one of the f- actual first future bass songs that were uh, ever released on yep. Monster Cat. Uh, I even, remember researching this last time. Yeah, yeah. The third one. Yeah. Something like that. I'm pretty sure. Um, what was the first one? Is, what, what did that end up Perfect Fuse by Rogue okay. and then uh, Reach. Okay. So. Okay. That makes sense. And then, yeah, because Reach and the Haywire album were on 017. So that, yep. that makes sense. Um, yep. And then it exploded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's not like these Monster Cat artists really set uh, set the stones for the future bass scene because there were a lot of other artists who did that right. prior. But in terms of Monster Cat releases, I think uh, songs like this were very influential in everything. And then, of course, on Twofold Part 2, we had uh, I Am You featured as... Um, the lead or release day uh, yep. upload for the album because it was future based and it's like looking back on it uh, this album had a lot of influence on the kind of stuff we see on um twofold part two especially um i think i mentioned this before uh that there was a bit of house music and people had been saying like uh, what do I, what are we gonna expect for haywire when it comes to house and then you can kind of just look back and i think it was um the song time I'm pretty permutate. sure was the one well, permutate and time. Yeah. Yes, permutate. permutate was like neuro. Yeah, and yeah. Like, permutate was and the then more neuro. Time sounding. was more like garagey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that's why I think time really set the stones for um, do you don't you on the twofold yeah. part two one. In in my opinion, when I when I went back to listen through this one, I could draw a lot of parallels with those two. But yeah, as you were saying with with like glitch hop being um, his primary style, and um, if people hadn't listened to Haywire prior to his releases on monster cat which is kind of my situation uh, with mm-hmm. him as an artist and more recently i've just gone back into his older stuff just because it's it's nice to kind of go back to his roots but um if if you were someone like me uh as a listener and didn't listen to uh haywire and only knew him for his glitch hop releases this album was going to come as a huge shock um mm-hmm. just with so much talent uh really you cannot accentuate that enough um even if you prefer other albums to this one uh you you really can't deny that haywire has got a, such such a rich history um as a pianist when it comes to jazz and classical music he's he's clearly trained he's been working at it probably his entire life at this point because uh, as we can see eight years ago um was when he released his first album but haywire he, he's not too old now he must be like 25 or something um yeah something like that he's not yeah, he's 24 years old he's 24 so. so that means his first album was released when he was 16 then mm-hmm. and at that point he, his music you can you can go back and hear it and clearly like it was also very jazz influenced it so he must have been very trained uh, prior to even that point yeah. uh, i want to say i saw that he that. lived in like austria for a while okay. or something okay I, I might be wrong about that but i want to say i saw that at some point i'm, I'm not wrong he You're lived not in wrong. austria for okay. a while okay okay i was exposed cool. to jazz and hip-hop but obviously some of these tracks are more like jazz influence than other ones of course uh dichotomy uh, is was both one of our favorites i'm pretty sure back when this thing first released i kind of preferred the hard mix but uh just looking back i i think i prefer this one just because it's so yeah. different from anything not only anything haywire's done but anything i've really seen on monster cat where where that build is is just super huge and uh building up like it's going to be this big uh, drum and bass track or something and then it just goes like mm-hmm. that but I think I prefer the soft mix to the yeah, hard mix. That's what I'm saying. If, any, if anything else, like as a track, I prefer this in the context of the LP because I think it fits a lot more with the theme as you mm-hmm. know, that sort of organic. Oh, I agree. Music. I definitely agree with that. And I think the thing is, like, this album isn't entirely like super. It has that organic feel, but it isn't like an overwhelming. Uh, feeling like yeah. that like it still fits the monster cat sound and haywire still brings that bass and a lot of things especially in those yeah. glitch hop tracks and i mean this this 
version of the song still contains a lot of those elements that we saw uh, in the hard mix and there's still like hard portions of this but in general i think it, it retains that uh, much more organic sound which i love the sax is great on this mm -hmm. one as well yeah the lyrics on this thing as well weren't like the most impressive uh feats mm -hmm. ever there's definitely not uh too much going on in that department i'd say sculpted it's, is probably the deepest one because it's talking about you know like so you've got the personality predetermined uh your image sculpted by the pressure of conformity and i think that's probably the biggest line right there is when haywire is kind of trying to possibly get a little political uh, with it and that's why this song gets the deepest uh, looking back on it this song um was one of the songs that got me really hyped uh, for the record just because it was a mm -hmm. free release and i used to be that way with monster cat free releases like oh this is so cool but <laughs> uh looking back on it this is probably one of my least favorites on the album um definitely wasn't a terrible track i mean there's really nothing that i think is bad on this record like don't get me wrong there's right. uh, there's not a single dud on here in my opinion um, but then we do get some other lyrical content on here. Obviously, nothing is is super profound Deep. or anything like that, right? Uh, uh, like voice Hayward's of reason. Why won't you yeah. listen to me? Why yeah. won't? Hayward is not going to be confused for grab it. Right, right, soon, definitely. So. And then time probably wasn't like super deep either and no I mean, that's not really on haywire spot and actually i think we mentioned as well the only feature haywire has ever done um yeah on an album, at least on monster, on monster Cat, Cat, yeah. anyway has yep. been was time on this album uh, and that's one of my favorites too so yep. i think it's also the last time coma has been on the label too yeah yeah not really that does not really sure sense. what happened to her this is yeah. haywire's like only two collaborations on the on the label oh yeah like, yeah zero, as well you zeros guys and galamatius yeah i remember that and uh galamatius oh man i really i remembered last time we had talked about this i really need to go back and and listen yeah. to more of his stuff and you said he hasn't released anything recently in like the right? last year yeah mm -hmm. that's kind of sad because i remembered his sea of voices remix was like super yeah, killer was and so I think, good yeah i think voice of reason kind of lays the ground for that as well i mean that that's probably one of my my favorites on the album too i'll uh, i'll admit i've actually never heard zeros outside of this i definitely this, have uh, it was one song. other instance i'm pretty sure i don't remember what it was though it was a remix of i need my memory back by the glitch mob i think this might be the first haywire album where he, we see him like roaring into those um those synth solos i don't think that has ever been a previous thing uh, prior to this point in haywire's career being with monster cat more made him focus more on those lead melodies being more present and things like that and i think this album is a a, a resounding um example of that because we do get those uh, synth solos on a few different spots um on doppelganger is one of them um one of my favorite intro uh intro to second track sequences ever is on this album uh, from yeah. any album from prologue part one into the schism and one of the really cool things i think about prologue two is i don't think it carries the same tempo the whole time like it kind of speeds up and slows down as it as it wishes i'm pretty sure it doesn't keep like a steady tempo throughout but then uh it somehow flows perfectly into the schism um yeah and that's just how it is i guess <laughs> i'm just gonna accept that haywire is a uh, very good musician and somehow just works magic with that kind yeah of stuff. like i i honestly it's really hard for me to understand it because even in haywire's music uh outside of this album we we still see him using those jazz chords and everything and, and really those ones just blow my mind when you can take that and combine it with electronic music really i think haywire is one of those few artists that can really pull it off and i think i mentioned this in the last one too that uh, this is a bit of a topic of conversation is that i feel like haywire is probably um one of the more talented names in this um i think it was new jazz it was the term uh, that yeah. i used this new jazz movement he's one of those names that is really um pushing boundaries that i feel like a lot of artists aren't because there are people that can play the sax we've seen that uh, recently like uh with uk's um thief we've seen like that sax blaring in the drop but that isn't like necessarily super jazzy we've seen big gigantic do it we've seen grizz do it but i just don't think mm -hmm. even though those might have more jazz pieces in it i feel like haywire's compositions in general uh just exemplifies that a lot more than those artists are able to i think uh, yeah really he, he, he incorporates it a lot more flawlessly mm -hmm. yeah i i agree I, I think in general this guy is just uh one of the most talented names on the label arguably the most uh maybe put him next to varian just because varian yeah. is so off the yeah, charts with his instrumentation that's what i was, I was gonna say varian yeah. and then maybe like 
maybe feed your seven minutes dead or something yeah yeah but, absolutely i'd say they're all up there with when it comes in terms of especially instru- instrumentation i think um really haywire and uh very very going to be yeah, the big they're the pretty big much two. untouched yeah uh when it comes down to ratings i'm feeling like a strong nine for this one when it uh, just looking back on it um i wouldn't really rate any other monster cat album close to this one like i already said two for no, part two yeah. comes pretty close but and then for you obviously space cadet uh what are your yeah. thoughts when it comes to a rating probably i would i would again i'd give it like a if we were going like grades in school it'd be like mm-hmm. a 93 or a 94 yeah which so is like it's a, it's a strong eight. yeah strong yeah memory. if you guys haven't listened to this masterpiece before i would definitely suggest you do it uh, especially if you're a new fan of monster cat and things like that this is one of those albums that is absolutely essential to monster cats uh, discography as a label i would definitely i think both of us i can speak for both of us saying that yeah. you should definitely uh, go back and check this one out especially if you've listened to twofold part two which i think actually was a bigger success uh, than this one so I'm, I'm assuming mm-hmm. there was a number of people that listened to that one and not the first one. I think you really have to understand the roots and go back to this album if you want to be able to uh, kind of pick up where the second one was going off. And uh, in general, even if you're not a big Monster Cat fan, I would definitely suggest going back to this thing just to kind of soak in uh, how talented Haywire is as an artist. I'm hoping to do more videos kind of like this in the future. Uh, this was actually the first video in a throwback series. I'm hoping to do those about every month i go back and review like an old album that was influential on my music taste and things like that and uh, as well as in the monster cat top five series i'll be doing that as well going back and reviewing some older stuff just like john does on his channel hey. but uh anyway i'm landon remixes i'm red Hawk director and we'll see you guys later peace oh,